What it do? Dream Team, it's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we go. Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, a courtship of rivals basketball. Uh, as you can see, this is an hour and a half, so we are going to split this into four different parts. Before we jump into it, though, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so I can suggest it. If you guys got a favorite video suggestion, you can subscribe to Patreon and drop it in the comment section. What we got? They talk about it every day, somewhere. If I go to a foreign country, magic, magic, we're magic. <laughs> Same everywhere. <laughs> say hello. We don't have to call each other. That's my main competition. It's always been like that. Come on now. You know you got this tight bond with this cat and you don't have to see him for a year or two. Um, but you're always going to be linked to him. <laughs> I like that. We got this connection that's never going to be broken. I mean, right to our graves. They'll be talking about this 100 years from now. I like that, man. It all began here in Salt Lake City, Utah, on the night of March 26, 1979. It was the NCAA championship, Indiana State versus Michigan State, a game that still ranks as the highest rated college final ever on television. A game that's now remembered as a prologue to a rivalry that transformed a sport and intertwined two legacies. But on that night, March 26, 1979, the first time Magic Johnson and Larry Bird ever went head-to-head -head on a basketball court. That's they were crazy. simply two young men trying to win a very big ball game. Well, this is probably the biggest game I'll ever play in my life, and I just feel like, you know, I'm representing not only myself, my team, but we're representing our school and our, and our town, Terre Haute. Well, it's uh, a dream come true, really, for me. Uh, I won the state title back in my home state, and then my next accomplishment was going to the NCAA and playing in a, a game like tonight in the finals. They were two That's stars crazy, thrown bro. to... First time they ever met. National championship game. They earned, made first time they played each other. That's crazy, man. Two completely different guys, bro. ...together by the Cosmos to compete. But only one of them had been groomed for the spotlight. <laughs> in his case, it seems since birth. I think his upbringing in East Lansing really put that smile on his face in the beginning, and, and it never came off. Born August 14, 1959, Irvin Johnson grew up in Lansing, the gritty industrial capital city of Michigan. Raised under this little roof, he was one of Christine and Irvin Johnson Sr.'s ten kids. Christine was a school custodian, while Irvin Sr. worked two jobs Nearly around the Jeez. clock. Dang. My father, he got up early every morning, six o'clock or so, and uh, he went to uh, work on his trash hauling truck every single day. Around noon, he would come home, catch a nap, and then he worked for General Motors for 30 years. God. He won an award for never being late and never uh, missed a day. Wow. As a youngster, Irvin displayed his own strong... That's, that's an insane work ethic. See, I don't have that inside of me. I'm not built that way. That's an insane work, work ethic. ethic. on the blacktop. I was out there all day. <laughs> Before we went to school, the bus leave at 7, 7.30. I was out there at 6, 6.30 working mm. on my game. My mother sometimes had to bring me food. Or she would have one of my brothers and sisters go get that boy so he could eat something. From a very young age, Irvin knew what he wanted to do. He had it all planned out. My dreams were to play in the NBA. 
and become a businessman. The first neighborhood basketball powerhouse, Saxton High. I knew the players, I knew the tradition. I wanted to be a part of that. And it was on the west side of town, which was at that time predominantly black. Mm. But when Lansing, like many cities in the mid 70s, began busing to desegregated school system, mm. Irvin's journey took an unexpected detour to a predominantly white school across town. Oh, really? My first day at Everett High School was my first time I really had to understand there was a, a race problem. Nobody mm. white would speak to anybody black, and nobody black would speak to anybody white. A lot of racial tension. That's crazy. A lot of fights, rioting. Yeah. They didn't want minorities there. He got you know, the, definitely, you got to, around those times, too, yeah, you know it was definitely a struggle. Uh... The, the, the racial tension uh, in that school. Often, basically, his attitude was, okay, well, I'll, I'll overcome this. Whenever there was any racial problems, the principal would get Urban and go talk to these kids. <laughs> see with his big hands, calm down, just calm down, and break up fights. Talk with his friends, tell him, you know, let it go, you know, we can't fight about everything. Let's just chill, let's play basketball. And there was no dispute over Irvin Johnson's ability to play ball. His talent was so great that soon after his varsity debut, a local reporter, dazzled by his exploits, gave the budding star a nickname. That's In the crazy. beginning, I thought it was foolish and dumb. You know, I didn't know nothing about a nickname. Then what was. happened was, you start saying, wait a minute, it fits my game. And <laughs> boys on the street corners, we used to sing Temptation songs. <laughs> They started saying, hey, man, Magic, that's cool. And then people I like that. started saying, hey, Magic. And I said, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he bought into it, and um, I of think course. he felt he had to kind of live up to that name. And I must say that he did. He loved it. The more attention he got, you know, <laughs> he just he wanted attention from anybody he could get it from. <laughs> yeah, it does, no, no. I really love the game, and uh, I just want to win. Gets it over and back, and he dances through Irvin Johnson. Irvin loved to dress. Ha <laughs> ha! Sandal belt pants and overcoats with the, the fur around the collar. <laughs> he just had to have his afro blown out. <laughs> he had to look the part, play the part. Irvin was the first guy to have a posse. He not only had a posse of a lot of black kids, he had a lot of white kids <laughs> hanging around him. Yeah! Some of my white friends was like, Hey, that boy Magic, you know what I'm saying? He, like they said in the beginning, he was built for the spotlight. He was bred for the spotlight. He loved the spotlight. I love it. I love white it. Kids. <laughs> Some of my white friends was like, Hey, man. Uh, we're having a kegger tonight. Won't you come on by? And I'm said, what's a kegger? So he said, well, what it is, we get this big keg of beer, and you just go for it. Okay. Well, what time does the, the kegger start? Because regular party time, in our neighborhood is 10, 11 o'clock. Uh, the kegger starts at 7. I said, the party starts at 7 o'clock? Okay, man, I'm going to come to the kegger. We had a good time. The music was kind of bad, but we had a good time. <laughs> His senior year, Johnson did at Everett. Oh. He planned to do at Sexton, win the state championship. So nice. And when it came to choosing a college, he decided to stay where the love would be assured, home in Lansing. Next year, I will be uh, attending Michigan State University. At MSU, Magic's star quickly went national. But atop the college game, he soon discovered uh -oh. a certain presence beside him. Uh-oh. The first time I saw Larry Bird was actually in a magazine. Saw his stats. Blown away by his stats. <laughs> of course. But let's see if he can really do it mm. against us. And that's always a mindset of black players if he's a great white player. That's true. In 1978, after his freshman year, Magic would quickly find out. 
when both he and Bird were chosen to play for Team USA in the World Invitational Tournament. They would put Larry Bird and I on the same team together to scrimmage, right? It, it was blowing my mind because he's dominating Jack Givens, player of the year in college basketball. Larry Bird is eating <laughs> him alive. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't wait to call home to tell my boys. Oh my God! This dude named Larry Bird is for real. This is the baddest white dude I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> well, I thought he was very good. There's no question about it. I actually, I thought he was probably the best guard on the team. Irvin Johnson, look at that! Oh, what a play. We didn't get to play a lot, but you could tell. I think our first game was in Kentucky. We got about a 10, 12 point lead, and they put us in. Went to 25, 30, just that fast. <laughs> fast break again, three on two. Oh Griffin. my God! Thank you, I'll take Take that. that. Take us out, the lead go back down, put us back in. That's third, and Johnson. The show started again. When you play with Magic, there's just something about it. You want to make that extra pass. You want to get that <laughs> rebound and start to break. Oh, good toss. We came down a couple times. I go behind my back, no look to him. He no look to him. Oh, 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 this guy got game. <laughs> they had some wonderful moments on the court, but they probably spoke to each other four, maybe five times during that entire time period. Oh, wow. And and it was more like, hello, how are you this morning, Larry? I'm good, Magic. What'd you have for breakfast? Don't remember. Have a nice day. <laughs> but such curtness was hardly strange coming from mm. Larry Bird, who is not only one of college basketball's best players, but also its biggest enigma. I think he was a mystery to the extent that, that, that he wanted to be a mystery. He didn't enjoy doing interviews. He didn't go out of his way to do them. He wasn't particularly good at them. He was kind of like, hey, this is who I am. You want to know who I am? Watch the game. That's who I am. I start to read Simple materials as that. that you're very quiet and you don't enjoy talking to newspaper people. Well, you know, there's different kind of newspaper paper people. Uh, there's uh, people that try to push you. You know, there's people who try to get things out of you. Things don't even pertain to basketball. And then the type mm. of people I like to stay away from. He didn't want people talking about his family. He didn't want his mother to have to deal with that or his siblings to have to deal with that. You got to remember where Larry came from. You know, Larry was raised in a two or three room house on a railroad track. Their family probably lived on $50 a week. He was ah, raised man. tough. Larry Joe Bird grew up in southern Indiana, in the twin towns of French Lick and West Baden. Mm. The valley, as locals call it, was a tough working class area. Tiny and remote, it was one of the poorest places in the state. Wow. I didn't I know would. that people made millions of dollars. I didn't know that everybody had a family car. I was in a own cocoon. Mm. I was in a small town with the people I knew, and I thought I'd live there for the rest of my life. Arriving Pearl Harbor Day, 1956, Larry was the fourth of six kids born to Georgia God and Joe Bird. Six. Early on, he and his older brothers earned a reputation around the valley. We were always considered troublemakers. <laughs> we were fighting amongst ourselves, or there was always one of us fighting somebody. <laughs> Larry was always one that kind of instigated. <laughs> if I get my brother in a fight with somebody his age, I was happy as hell. I like to see him get beat up, and that's what it was. If, if I got in a, 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 a scrape with some kid and my brothers didn't come to my side, they knew that when he got home, my dad was going to whip him. Mm. Larry and my dad, they, they definitely got that. You know what I'm saying? I have each other's backs. I, I feel like how brothers should be. You should have each other's backs, definitely. Larry instigated. He said, I like seeing my brother get beat up. If I could instigate something with a, a fight with a kid his age, his size, I do that, and that made me happy. Uh, but you could tell they was def they were definitely close, and they had each other. Now that when he got home, my dad was gonna whip him. Larry and my dad were best of friends. I love they it. done everything together. When my dad would go out to my grandma's house, Larry would always go with him. They'd go fishing, do a lot of things together. 
But Joe Bird also had a darker side, stemming from a traumatic tour of duty in Korea. Oh, Larry wow. remembers waking up in the middle of the night hearing his father's blood-curdling screams from the nightmares he had had from the war. Oh, wow. What happened to his father in the war affected his entire life. He was never able to quite get rid of whatever those demons were. A talented craftsman, Joe Bird struggled to hold steady jobs. And even when he was working, his demons would, on occasion, drive him to the bottle. There were times when Joe went out with the guys and had a few beers and the wages didn't come home that night. And that didn't happen every day. Uh, yeah. It happened once in a while, but when money is as tight as it was for the birds, mm -hmm. once in a while was a major problem for their family. I feel it. My mom sometimes worked late and sometimes she had two jobs, but that's the way it was. I worked at school during my lunch hours, worked at the local grocery store, put up hay in the summer. I mean, if you wanted money, you had to get it on your own. To young Larry, actions spoke louder than words. He was very quiet, kind of hung to himself a little bit. I saw Larry take an F in an English class oh. because he had to get up in front of his peers and give a speech. He said, I'm going to do it. He <laughs> get up in front of his friends and talk. He was that Dang. Of course, next thing you know, when he knew it was time for all of us together at the gymnasium, there he'd be. The minute Ready he for that. A basketball in his hand, things were totally different. Basketball was just, it came to me, seemed like easy. I didn't have the quickness, I didn't have jumping ability. I just thought the game out. By his senior year at Springs Valley <laughs> High, Larry Bird had sprouted God, into a star. Hey, look how long this Joker is, man. Oh my God. But Bird was from the Valley. Hardly a hotbed of talent in the big time mm -hmm. world of Indiana hoops. The first thing they say, well, they don't play nobody down there. He's from French Lick. They don't play nobody. I think that put a chip on his shoulder, always having to prove who he was and how good he was. He was good enough for Indiana University's Bobby Knight to come calling late his senior That's year. That's crazy, man. And folks in the Valley Bobby couldn't Knight. have been prouder. Their local hero was heading 60 miles north to play ball for one of the best college teams in the land. Once I got to IU, it didn't take long to realize that I was out of my cocoon. <laughs> I had over 30 some thousand students. That I didn't have Not used to that. First mm. week and a half, I thought, man, this ain't gonna work. He left after 24 days. Said, that's I put my it. mother down. She didn't talk to me for two months. It didn't matter what other people say. To this day, I don't care. Back in French Lick, Bird took to working for the city, hauling trash and painting park benches. Meanwhile, by that winter, his father's demons had taken him to an even darker place. Oh, wow. By this point, Joe and Georgia were divorced, and he was behind in his payments to the family. The police came by, and of course, they all knew him. So Joe said, hey, I need a few hours to get my affairs together before you take me away. So he called Georgia, and he said, you guys will be better off without me, and I'm going to take my life. And he put the phone down, and, and he killed himself. Oh, he shot my himself. God, bro. When Dad passed, you know, it Are hurt. Are you serious? Larry. That was his best friend. It's gone now. And, but Larry didn't show it a lot. He just didn't say much, you know, he just kind of held it within. I never, I've never heard him speak out about it at all. I was mad when I heard about it. And I was madder after the funeral because I thought he sort of cut out on us during a, a tough time. Yeah. You know, he, went, he went through a lot in his life. He did what he had to do. Bro, that's, I can't even fathom. I can't even imagine it, yeah. Ah, uh, that's, that, that, that's so tough, man. If Bill Hodges hadn't been as persistent as he had been, Larry Bird might never have existed in any of our minds. I believe that with all my heart. I really do. It was Bill Hodges a young coach from Indiana State University who convinced Bird to give college hoops another shot. So with a promise to his mom to graduate, Bird headed to Terre Haute and ISU, a school that never so much had been to the NCAA tournament. 
That's crazy. Once I started playing, it's the same old thing. You know, he's at a small school and he ain't playing against anybody, <clears throat> which is fine. Still dominated. <laughs> yeah. Now his claim to fame is just the way he plays the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was nasty. It's not the card no now. Hey, Larry, take a bow. Indiana has a new state bird. By the time he had led Tiny ISU as a senior to a 33 0 record, and That's a spot crazy. in the 79 title game, Larry Bird had become, alongside Magic Johnson, the talk of college basketball. <laughs> Just a year after sharing the court on Team USA, they were back together. And the day before the big game, Magic couldn't wait to greet his old playmate. In the end, State was on practicing, and we were waiting in the tunnel. We got there early. I wanted to definitely say hello to Larry, you know. When they came through, it was like nobody was saying nothing. I wanted to go toward him, like his guys, like, made sure <laughs> that he didn't say nothing. And then they kind of started <clears throat> snickering, like, Missing State, you in trouble. We're going to kill you guys tomorrow. <laughs> I probably did snub him. I don't remember it, but I'm, I'm sure I did. I didn't want any, you know, like I call it love fest, hugging and, and, and <laughs> high fives with opponents. You're there for a reason. You're there to win a game. That just said it's on now. <laughs> I love that, bro. I love the different mindsets of both of them. Because while Larry's got the mindset, I don't want to do the hug and I don't want to greet you. I don't want to be your friend. I don't want to be cool with you. I'm there. It's about business. I'm there to win this game and that's it. And Magic's like, you know what I'm saying? Magic's all happy, go lucky. Like, I want to be your friend. Like, I want to be cool. What's up? How you doing out there? I want to talk to you. But at the end of the day, once they both step on that court, they both have that competitive the competitiveness inside of them. They both have that killer mindset, that drive inside of them to win. Just two completely different personalities. You can't help but love them. Indiana State against Michigan State. I'm Bryant Dumbo, and the fans here are going bananas. I mean, let's face it, if, if Larry Bird were black and, and came from Chicago, it wouldn't have been as big a deal. They, they, were, mm. they were polar opposites. One yeah. black, one white, one outgoing, one shy. That was the charm of the attraction. The bird against magic. All of the superlatives have been used, and believe me, all of them have been warranted. Heading into the tournament, Welcome to the magic, magic was Kingdom. the bigger star. But by tip-off, it was Bird. <laughs> Having hardly missed a shot in the semifinal, would become Jeez. the focus of fans, and more importantly, of Michigan State. We actually had two men on Larry everywhere he went. <laughs> Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't said, play a box on one, touch you know, it. four guys on Larry and one on the other four. <laughs> um, because that's they didn't have a lot of talent. <laughs> you know, if you stop Larry, you pretty much stop them. Look at the pressure around him. Two, three, men, and he's short. I didn't play well at all. Biggest game of my life, I didn't play well. Third, way short. I think our, our length and our size, our jumping ability was able to bother him. I didn't shoot well, missed, uh, I think, three free throws. Larry Bird has had a cold shooting night. I battled him, but I didn't have it. Dang. God dang! Congratulations, Super Bowl game. Hey. It was over, you know. That was gotta be years. somebody gotta win and somebody gotta lose. That's the tough part. It's done. No, it still hurts. See. When you win thirty three in a row and you walk into a game, you know, you never know what to expect, but expect to win. I expect to win. We didn't win. <laughs> Yeah, that's tough. That's a tough one. 
couple slow. We're gonna, we gonna stop it right here though for the first part. Uh, you guys got a favorite video suggestion? You can subscribe to Patreon and drop it in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. I got social media, Patreon all up top. You know, subscribe to any of it. Put all the links in the description. All you gotta do is hit the link. Follow me. Talk to me. Love talking to you guys. You guys are the most incredible team on YouTube. It's your boy Dina. Out.